Heading south is the village of Ardrishig, which straddles the eastern end of the Crinan Canal. As it grew in size, a pier was built and it became a stopping off point for the famous Clyde paddle steamers, which up until the war were used like local buses. This was once the home of the Labour politician John Smith. Argyll is a wild and remote region with miles of traffic free forest tracks, beaches, ancient drovers' routes, and hill tracks. The road travels down Loch Fyne to Tarbert. The name is derived from Terebersht, meaning the narrow stretch of land between the east and west lochs. Said to be Scotland's greatest natural harbour, the village is still a fishing port and a base for ferry links. The castle may date from the 6th century, built by Fergus, the first Christian king of Kintyre. Certainly the oldest existing exchequer role of Scotland shows a little over £500 being spent on rebuilding the castle by King Robert the Bruce, and a royal parliament sat in the castle in the 16th century, and Tarbert was the sheriffdom until 1633. Today, however, the ivy-clad ruins of a 15th century keep is all that remains, best viewed as you enter the village from the south on a hill above the harbour. The harbour is often home to numerous yachts, with the Scottish series being based here, second only in importance to cows on the yachting calendar. The famous Loch Fine kippers are still smoked locally. The herring shoals or silver darlings do not, however, play the same economic role as once they did, due to declining fish stocks and quotas. The snug anchorage of Tarbert has offered a safe haven for centuries. Often boats were hauled across to West Loch Tarbert to avoid the long journey around the Mull of Kintyre. Indeed, in 1093, the Norse king Magnus Bearlegs had his galley dragged over whilst he was at the helm to claim the rich lands of Kintyre as part of his island kingdom. Robert the Bruce, to celebrate victory over the English, repeated this feat later. The harbour is home to an active fishing fleet, these days busy with hauls of lobsters, prawns and scallops, unloaded daily at the quayside. Most are sent to Spain. Tarbert is the head of the peninsula of Kintyre, which at 40 miles long is the longest in Scotland and averages only 8 miles in width. The name means Land's End, and the tip of this piece of land is only a dozen miles from Ireland. Two roads travel south through Kintyre, one on the east and the main road on the west. We take the single track road down the east with far-reaching views of the Isle of Arran. The tiny village of Skipness is signposted off the road and seems to straddle the dramatic windswept shoreline with the castle in the distance, commanding a strategic position guarding the entrance to Loch Fyne. Skipness Castle is built of rubble walls with attractive sandstone dressings, similar to the castle over Kilbrannan Sound at Ochranza, from where the stone was quarried. It appears both castles of similar style guarded either side of this important shipping lane. Skipness is Norse for the point of ships. Dating from at least 1261, enlarged in 1300 by Sir John Menteith, with possible assistance from the King of England, Edward I, the castle and lordship passed in 1325 to the Macdonald Lords of the Isles, but with the forfeiture in 1493 reverted to the Crown, and was granted some nine years later to the second Earl of Argyll. It resisted siege in 1645, and 40 years later a warrant for its demolition was issued, which was successfully petitioned against by the Laird Walter Campbell. It remained in Campbell hands until the mid-19th century, but was abandoned as a residence sometime before 1700. Skipness Castle was home to Archibald Campbell, first Earl of Skipness, in the early 16th century. His wife, Janet Douglas, Lady Glams, was found guilty of witchcraft and burned at the stake. Campbell, who was accused of being her accomplice, died from a fall whilst trying to escape from Edinburgh Castle. <laughs>